today's video is a little bit different. I'll be doing a Q&A because the channel recently hit 20,000 subscribers. So that's a bit of a milestone and something I'm very happy about and also very grateful to you guys. I definitely couldn't have kept the encouragement to keep going with these videos without all those nice comments down in the comment section. So thanks for that. There will also be a giveaway to give something back to you guys. So there will be some pretty cool coffee gifts. So there will be a DF83 and D40, which was kindly provided by Me Coffee. There's also an Avenzi brew glass set provided from Ecosa. And finally, I'm also giving away the brand new Flare Neo Flex. There's the little caveat that I will test it first and do a video, but I promise I will take really good care of it and uh, it should be as good as new. So if you're interested in any of these prizes, then sign up with the link down below. Oh, and I should say it's probably a good idea to keep watching a bit of this Q&A because there will be some small hints that could probably help you and increase your chances of winning. So Omni Roasting is an interesting thing. It's been in fashion the last five years maybe. And generally it means that you have one roast degree that you can use both for filter coffee and espresso coffee. And obviously there are some beans that will work pretty well for both things, but I think somehow you will end up compromising if you follow this uh, philosophy. Probably the beans could be a little bit better for drip coffee if you roasted them lighter, and they could also be a little bit better for espresso if you develop them a bit more. So in my view, Espresso and drip coffee are just two pretty different beverages. Uh, I mean, if you take 18 grams of coffee and then you look at an espresso shot and you take the same 18 grams of coffee and then you look at a filter batch, like a big batch of filter coffee, those are two different kind of volumes. So obviously you're going to have a lot more acidity at that concentrated level, whereas it will be diluted a lot more in the big beverage so i think as a roaster if you don't account for that then you're probably shooting yourself in the foot i'm not disputing that some people can pull quite good shots out of lightly roasted coffee but i just don't think it's the average consumer most people don't have uh, high-end flat bird grinders they don't have uh, really good espresso machines with uh, pre-infusion and adjustable temperature what i'm trying to say overall is that i think omni roasting is interesting from a philosophical point of view but in practice i think most roasters probably shouldn't do it this is actually something i get asked quite often every time i post something about uh, flat bottom drivers somebody will ask me about this so now is a good time to address it Uh, yes, I have had coffee from the Aurea uh, and I enjoyed it. I mean, most drivers can make pretty good coffee, so I can't see any reason why the Aurea shouldn't be able to make good coffee. And it was fine. Uh, do I own an Aurea? No, not currently. And I'm not sure I'm gonna pick one up. At the time I was looking at the Aurea dripper, it was kind of difficult to get. It was a little bit too expensive for what I like for a plastic dripper. And around the same time, I also picked up the Time More B75, which is uh, a lot more affordable. And also I had had the Simplified Dripper from Bathtub Coffee uh, as well. So I had two drippers that were kind of doing the same thing. Also, there was something about the whole marketing that to me felt a little bit like that kind of uh, limited edition sneaker culture thing. Uh, that is a little bit too much built around hype for my taste. And I'm not really sure I want the channel to be about, you know, the newest, hottest thing. I'm more interested in uh, things that also have a place in a few years. So I've been around long enough that I can remember many of these kind of drippers that were flavor of the month. A few years back, it was origami everybody was talking about. Uh, so I'd probably rather wait and see if the Aurea is uh, still the hot thing next year. And then uh, maybe I'll pick it up. And then there's that whole no bypass brewing thing. And I have experimented with that before with uh, the Trigolet, the Mugen, the Kono drippers. And uh, to be honest, I think it's more interesting in theory than in the cup. So usually I will get the slightly dull cups when I follow that approach. So for that reason, I haven't been eager to uh, invest in more zero bypass drippers. 
if I had to pick a single country to drink coffee from for the rest of my life, I would probably have to take Ethiopia just because uh, there's the biggest variety of beans, the type of coffee I personally like. There's a lot of it from uh, over there. I've heard quite crazy numbers, like 90% of all the genetic variation in coffee exists in Ethiopia. So I think that would be a good country to pick if you just had to take a single one. I'm sure Panama, probably the best coffee is even better over there, but uh, I don't have that much money and uh, I can only afford coffee from Panama a few times a year. So I think for this question, I will pick Ethiopia. Well, I think with grinders, you get to a point of diminishing returns pretty fast, actually. If we're talking drip coffee, you can get something like the Easypresso uh, Q2 Heptagonal now. It's available for a pretty affordable price and it's going to be quite uh, expensive to get something that's just vastly outperforms it. So I think once you get to that pretty decent level, then you should spend your money on uh, coffee. When it comes to espresso, those grinders tend to be a little bit more expensive. But if you have a reasonably good uh, mid-range flatbed grinder, I think again, it's time to uh, focus on the coffee. If you have the cheapest beans from the supermarket, you can't really uh, make them taste good just because you have an end game grinder. So my professional background is as a journalist. I studied journalism at the university and I've been writing about a lot of different things. My most recent job was at an online publication writing about uh, business and innovation. Coffee, on the other hand, was a hobby of mine. I've been uh, into coffee roasting for many years. I think I started in 2007, 2008, something like that. And uh, so I was pretty interested in coffee and I thought I knew a lot about it, which I didn't really, but yeah, compared to the general population. So the way the two things got connected uh, was uh, I wanted to create a blog for myself I'd been quite close to that whole process of uh, developing a brand and a tone of voice when I was working at the magazine. And I kind of wanted to experiment with that for myself, uh, be my own boss, be my own editor and developing a brand from scratch. So I started a Danish coffee blog. And then as I started working with coffee more professionally, interviewing uh, coffee farmers, and uh, award-winning baristas, I realized that uh, actually there was a lot of interesting things I didn't know. And at that point, coffee became a bit more of an obsession for me. So the next step after that was that I realized that uh, it was an interesting topic, but writing about coffee in Danish was not really going to lead anywhere because Danish is a very tiny language and there aren't that many people who are interested in coffee on a very uh, geeky level in uh, that small country. So I had to branch into English, even though it was not my native language. And that's how I started my English blog, The Coffee Chronicle. So at that point, I was pretty serious about coffee. And that's how I decided to take the Q Grader license because uh, I had never worked in a coffee shop. I had no barista experience. And I wanted to have some kind of certificate that could show I was more than just somebody online with a lot of opinions. And now I'm doing this YouTube channel as well. I guess it's just a natural progression of writing about coffee. It just makes a lot of sense to show techniques and uh, reviews in videos because they can convey a lot more information. I will say in the beginning, I much preferred writing. It's uh, actually very difficult to make videos especially when English is not your native language. In the beginning, I would always look at the camera and freeze, forget what I was about to say. Actually, I still do. Uh, but uh, as you keep going, it becomes easier and you get a bit more of an audience. And that's what's really encouraging is to interact with you guys, uh, get all the feedback. Uh, so yeah, that's a great help. Well, the first thing I'll look at is probably, is this an espresso coffee or is it a filter coffee? The next thing I'll think about is, is this a coffee that's difficult to extract 
or is it more easy to extract and that will kind of determine my approach if it's difficult to extract then i need to take out that toolkit uh, grind finer use hotter water more turbulence pre-infusion all these things if it's an easy coffee to brew well then i'm just going to enjoy it i'll use one of the techniques uh, that i have a lot of videos about here on youtube uh, my go-to recipes or if i'm testing some new equipment i'll simply just take the coffee and brew it with uh, that piece of equipment uh, yeah so simple Uh, yes, I have some experience with chicory coffee. When I was in India, I had it a few times and it was actually quite interesting to try. Uh, I have a lot of footage from my trip to India and I hope I can uh, make and edit a YouTube video about that whole experience soon. And then I will probably also mention something about the uh, chicory in that video. That other substance you ask about, I am not sure what it is. Well, I have to say it's going really great. In the beginning, there were some bad batches, but I feel at this point, I got a pretty good handle of it for both uh, espresso and drip coffee. Uh, and it's opening up uh, some new dimensions of coffee to me, having all these uh, options. Uh, so it's really interesting and I'm happy I took the plunge. I made a video about uh, the bullet before, and I don't think I have that much new stuff to add since then. Uh, I started roasting a bit more commercially, started to supply a small coffee shop with uh, beans. So uh, it's going forward. Well, what I like about coffee is that it's a hobby where you can get into so many different things inside the hobby. So you have a cultural aspect, you have a historical aspect. You have a biological aspect as well. You know, you can travel with coffee. You have the whole taste sensory thing that is uh, the main part of coffee. And then you also have that interesting engineer geek uh, thing that a lot of people who are into brewing seem to like. Uh, so uh, yeah, and there's also a kind of artistic, um, artful side to coffee as well so it's a hobby that just opens a lot of doors to a lot of interesting conversations but on the other hand i will also say that i feel like this is a great time to be involved in coffee probably now is the time in history where there's been the biggest development uh, just within the last 15 years so maybe i'm just lucky i'm in coffee at this time where all this innovation is going to happen and it will be more stagnant in uh, 20 years who knows but uh, yeah, there's a lot of things to keep you occupied. Okay, that's enough questions for today. I'm already starting to ramble a little bit, but uh, maybe we'll do a second round of this if uh, you guys are still curious. Uh, if you have any more questions that you want me to answer, then you can uh, leave them down below and then I'll do my best to jump into the comment section. Also, don't forget about the giveaway. The link is down below. And I have to say thank you again to Me Coffee, Ecosa and Flair for supporting the channel and uh, helping me provide some uh, gifts to you guys. So that's it for today. I'll see you in another coffee video very soon.